I saw her he began to be aggressive towards her thinking she was drunk and he thought she just came to desecrate the altar and she said no my lord this is a woman who is venting out her sorrow and Eli spoke to her like Eli spoke to Anna I declare that every petition you have raised before the Lord let it return to you as answers for in Jesus name we pray now please greet someone by your left and right and then be gloriously seated God bless you some of you never greet anybody greet someone by your left and right in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah you're welcome to the house of God it's good to see everyone again the Bible declares they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion the house of God is a place of hope it's a place of faith it's a place of strength it's a place for encounters and may that be your testimony tonight in the name of Jesus God is helping us and he's raising us to be spiritual men and you may have learned here and let me repeat again that a spiritual man is more than a Christian a spiritual man is more than a follower of a man of God or a religion please lend me your attention a spiritual man you are spiritual to the degree to which you number one you submit to the supremacy of the Word of God you submit to the supremacy of the Word of God true spirituality is not just measured by spiritual activities true spirituality is not just measured by your loyalty to a man of God or even a church as important as that is are we together you are a spiritual man to the degree to which number one you have chosen as an act of your will to submit to the word of god the supremacy of the word of god you have exalted the word of god above culture you have exalted the word of god above all kinds of sociological sentiments when the word of god becomes the modus operandi of your life you are a spiritual man there are many people who talk spirituality but they are not spiritual men they are not spiritual women so let me repeat myself again that you are a spiritual man to the degree to which you have chosen to submit to the word of god number two you are a spiritual man to the degree to which you have chosen to submit to the ministry of the holy spirit get my teachings on the holy spirit there's still another series on its way coming are we together the holy spirit is beyond your friend the Holy Spirit is beyond the wind oils beyond the dove the Holy Spirit is beyond an influence the Holy Spirit is God the Spirit of the Living God sent to the believer the primary advantage the believer has in this life is the presence of the Holy Spirit even what you call scripture came from him holy men wrote as they were inspired they did not just guess what they wrote it was the Holy Spirit so if you do not submit to the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit you cannot be spiritual you can be 10 years in church please look at me you can be an elder in church you can be a deacon you can be a pastor but you are not spiritual just because you've been around the things of God true spirituality I repeat is measured by the degree of your submission to the word of God and number two your submission to the leadership the ministry of the Holy Spirit that means that in building men to be spiritual because according to scripture there are three kinds of men the Bible talks about the natural man that's the unregenerate man one who has not even encountered Jesus Christ through the new birth experience and then number two the Bible talks about the carnal man the one who is saved but not transformed not empowered you have to learn this this is not my message tonight but I just wanted to say this so the natural man is the one who is not saved at all has not confessed Jesus as his Lord and Savior the carnal man is one who has received Jesus are we together now 
but has not submitted to the ministry of the word of God and has not submitted to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He's sensual. His life is governed by the impulses of the senses and of the flesh. Number three, the spiritual man. The difference between the spiritual man and the natural man is that the spiritual man has decided to partner with the word of God to partner with the Holy Spirit even for his transformation and I've taught you here in this house that the greatest need of every unbeliever in order of divine priority is salvation there is nothing you can give to an unbeliever that satisfies that unbeliever truly from an eternal perspective higher than salvation that means if you see an unbeliever um, he may be a neighbor he may be a friend he may be a husband a wife he may be your child the highest need from an eternal perspective of an unbeliever is salvation then for the new believer the greatest need of the believer that has been saved is transformation do not forget this transformation the process that makes you become like Christ in experience and that is through the ministry of the word that is through the ministry of the spirit principally alongside of course other spiritual principles like prayer corporate fellowship fasting etc then the greatest need of a transformed believer is empowerment because when you are transformed and you are not empowered you will propose a lot of spiritual things that you do not have the strength and the grace to prove hallelujah so you will tell people jesus heals jesus delivers and yet there'll be demons flying all around you yourself your church your congregation your family and you can't do anything about it so empowerment is very important jesus took the people through a transformative process by the word and yet he told them tarry in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high hallelujah and then of course I did tell you that the greatest need of a transformed believer is character and then chiefest among the character traits that is needed is humility because we see this in the life of Jesus hallelujah so that you don't keep coming to church and cannot measure your growth you should be able to know what is happening to you many believers cannot exactly pinpoint what is happening to them imagine with me a student who has been in school maybe a college or university two three years and cannot tell what is happening you should be able to tell okay you you are now in the college of medicine you're four years down the line you should you should be able to prove that you are learning you are not yet a doctor certified but at least we should see that you have made progress is that true so if you've been to church for a while and there is no difference between the former you and the now you it is either the preacher is wasting your time respectfully speaking or you are wasting your own time by being in the presence of God but not being open to receive listen the church the house of God is also a school the house of God is also a school. It's a training ground where God builds people. The church is not the place of manifestation. The church is the place of training. Now you are trained like you are receiving tonight. Then you can now be released with knowledge and grace. Knowledge and grace because grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge. You can now go out and be ambassadors, whether in the marketplace, in ministry, whatever it is. The church is a school, is a place of training. And the same way a student does not pay attention in school, there are people in the house of God who also do not pay attention. The same principles that make a student excel in class are the same principles that make a, so a, a, a student excel in church. That name congregant or members sometimes can be very deceptive because it makes people very casual. I am a member. I am a... Um, but when you see yourself as a student, or the Bible calls them a disciple, a disciple is one who submits himself to doctrine, to learning. Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. My assignment as a man of God is to walk with the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, and obtain wisdom to create 
a blueprint for your spiritual growth and this is my commitment it is it is a covenant commitment so it has nothing to do with sentiments or emotions I am committed and I vow to God that there is no week of my life that I will have the privilege to teach that you'll be seated here that I would waste your time either with valueless information or you know not prepare the ground to give you the kind of spiritual experience that translates to your growth that one you leave that to me the best you can do is to pray for me and encourage me but it is my assignment and thankfully there is a grace allocated to ensure that we are efficient are we together but your own assignment is to believe and to receive and to be prepared to walk in keeping let, let me tell you this if you have been up to one two months in this ministry and you don't have any potent results it is not the bankruptcy of grace it is that something is truly either you're hearing because the bible says to take heed what you hear and to take heed how you hear what you hear the quality of the content how you hear your attitude in approaching the spoken word so my encouragement for everyone is that when you come to church see yourself as going to a school i'm about to learn my life is about to change an encounter is coming from heaven that will improve me wisdom is coming from heaven that will improve me are we together an area of confusion in my life is about to be cleared an area where I have perpetually experienced bankruptcy of results is about to be sorted. And you carry that expectation to the house of God. The Holy Spirit is already there. The angels of God are already there. The word is ready to come from heaven. The anointing is there to back the word. There is nothing that should stop your growth and your transformation. Hallelujah. And let me give one last counsel before we just touch on what we have tonight when you are in the house of God as much as possible let your mind be here I hope you know you can be here and yet you are not here you can be here and you are thinking how much have I made now in my supermarket I hope that they didn't close it or I'm here you know all those kinds of things remember God is a faithful father he knows you need money he knows you need open doors he knows that there's a rent issue he knows that you're trusting God for maybe job just drop all those things aside and the Bible says they looked unto him let your eyes be on Jesus yes I'm trusting God for a business deal yes I'm trusting God for greater anointing but right now my attention is on Jesus he's about to speak and my heart is open to listen you cannot have that kind of attitude and leave the church without a blessing. Hallelujah. Father, speak to our hearts tonight. Our hearts remain ever opened. We are students of scripture. We are students in the school of the spirit. Thousands from across the globe. Thousands here on ground. In the name of Jesus, we submit to your wisdom. Help us. We are here because we know we can be better. We are here because we know that it takes training for us to reign even as kings. We are here because we trust your wisdom and your leadership. I pray in the name of Jesus that none of us will be disappointed tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah.